A big thank you to Jero for sponsoring today's video on Patreon. Couple of colourless commanders pitting it out now. Liberator versus Kozalek. So it's a case of seeing who can ramp faster. We've got a decent amount of ramp in hand there, so... Yeah, we'll keep it. See a Mox Diamond for our opponent, as well as an Ancient Tomb, so their ramp is getting off much better than ours is currently. Discarding an Inventor's Fair to the Mox. Not casting anything with that three mana though, surprisingly. We see duplicates, so... Yeah, it's just a Reliquary Tower into nothing. Oh, and they have suspended a Lotus Bloom as well, so down to three cards in hand. Passing straight through the turn again. And we see a Conduit of Ruin this time. So it's Darksteel Citadel will go in for the Fractured Power Stone. Once again, our opponent just passing the turn, so really reliant on this Lotus Bloom apparently. We see an unstable obelisk, so uh, that is Buried Ruin into the unstable obelisk. We'll tap for one mana, and then we can play out the Thought Vessel and pass. That will put us on six mana next turn. So the last Suspend Counter being removed from the Lotus Bloom, and they'll get it into play here, giving them an additional three mana for one turn. <laughs> Down to four cards in hand, we now see a Lion's Eye Diamond as well. So they can afford their commander exactly, so a Blast Zone as well. And they decided to discard to the Lion's Eye Diamond a Fire Shrieker, Ugin, a Khan, and Blink Moth Urn. So they better hope that they draw into some decent stuff there, because they discarded some really good cards. We just need to hope that they don't have a 6 CMC spell that they can discard to counter the um, duplicant here. Do you see a Mox Opal? We draw into Ugin the Ineffable. So, uh, yeah, I think we just have to try the duplicant here. And if we land that, then our opponent's a million miles away from getting out the Kozilek again, unless he just drew into a bunch of ramp. But if he does have a 6 CMC spell in hand, he can counter the duplicant, and that's pretty much going to spell the end for us. Looks like we're going to land it, though. Duplicant being pointed at the Kozilek. And we do successfully exile the commander here, so... Uh, We'll have to see how much ramp they can get going here. Blast Zone could get rid of a few of our rocks, which is noteworthy. A Gilded Lotus, so they do have some more ramp available, as you would expect in a Kozilek deck. You see a Lightning Greaves after that, so Kozilek passing with three mana shy of their commander, and four cards in hand at the moment. We see a Warping Whale, which is in here to counter a Sorcery. So I think setting up with Ugin for a three mana Forsaken Monument is alright, and then we can tap these down for 6 mana next turn for whatever else. Yeah, let's go for Ugin the Ineffable and start ticking that up. Exile the top card with the Ugin, and we get rid of a Sensei's Divining Top. I think we're fine to swing in here, I don't think that our opponent's going to do anything through the Spirit Token. Obviously we've got haste to worry about against our Ugin, but uh, yeah, I'm thinking we'll be able to jump block with the Spirit Token. A doubling cube now. This thing did used to be broken, so not sure if they can uh, make use of it here. They've also dropped an Eye of Ugin, so yeah, we've still gone too slow against this player as well, apparently. Okay, not sure if they actually made use of the doubling cube there, but we do see a Wandering Archaic. So Lightning Greaves going on to there, and see if they swing in towards the Spirit Token. Casting a Warping Whale to make a 1-1 Eldrazi, so that is just being used as ramp for them, I imagine. So we'll just chump the creature that's incoming, and the Sensei's Divining Top obviously goes into our hand with that. Alright, so we do see a Scavenger Grounds here, which is good with the um, Forsaken Monument, means we get even more mana. That's plus on the Ugin before I forget. Exiling this time a Cloud Key. So we'll play the Forsaken Monument out here because that obviously nets us a decent chunk of mana. And we can play ourselves a Traxos for only two mana. That gains us two life, because we cast a colourless spell. And that comes in tapped. It is a 9-9 as it stands now, though. Um, yeah, I think going for the Conduit of Ruins fine as well. So we gain two life again. We will search our library for a Kozilek of our own, because then we'll be able to refill our hand with this thing. And then we'll play the Sensei's Divining Top for free. That will untap the Traxos, gain us some life again. And then we're just holding up the Warping Whale, which I doubt is going to be of any use to us. If they can you, This is the problem with Magic Online. I'm assuming that this 
is something that they can use and that it's not bugged anymore. If it is bugged, then getting rid of this thing with the Warping Whale could actually be relevant so that they can't cast their commander again. But we'll just play as though this thing isn't bugged and they can actually use it because they've got plenty of mana for their commander if so. So let's swing in with the 4-6 Duplicant and we'll hope that we don't see the Kozilek again next turn, which I'm sure we will. So with 4 mana still floating, they can recast the Kozilek, one card in hand, so we don't draw quite as much. Ugh, and now Shadow Spear from our opponent. Just make sure that we can't do anything with Warping Whale, that is only a sorcery. Only exiles creatures, so yep. Trample and Lifelink going on to their commander isn't good. And they've still got the mana floating, so they can equip that onto the Kozilek. So we may well have to go for destroying that with the Unstable Obelisk. And then the Lightning Greaves goes over to the Kozilek as well. So that's now a 13-13 with Haste, Lifelink and Trample. <laughs> we see our commander's plate as well. They at least don't have protection from our colours because we are colourless of course. Yeah, it's really the Shadow Spear that we want to see the back of here. We should be able to chump block with Ugin all day long. So... Luckily we can gang up on the Kozilek if they decide to swing in here. So because of that they decide not to swing in. Um, let's go for the Sensei's Divining Top. We know the card that is on top but we can reorganise the other two just in case that's relevant. I suppose we're definitely going to be casting the Kozilek here so it doesn't really matter. Uh, Hedron Archive and Homeward Path. So what we can do here if we can cast the Sensei's Top for free we can go... Hedron Archive, Kozilek, draw into the Homeward Path. And that maximises the number of cards that we draw. So we get round to our turn, play the Homeward Path, tap down the Sensei's Divining Top, which draws us into the Kozilek. And then our Kozilek is only going to cost 6 mana. So untapping the Traxos gains ourselves 2 mana. And yeah, we'll just draw the 6 cards, keeping hold of the Warping Whale just in case. Alright, so we draw into more ramp, and the Sensei's Divining Top of course. So let's plus on the Ugin, exiling a card off the top. I suppose we could have gone for Sensei's Divining Top, play and spin, so that we have more of a say on that. There is the Sword of the Animist. Yeah, so I think getting down Liberator is going to be a good idea. So we'll play that out now. Could have played it before the Kozilek of course, so that we could start getting plus counters on that, but... I think drawing into the cards first to see what we get into is okay. Okay, so now having our opponent discard a Bonder's Ornament. Um, yeah, countering this thing is fine. I'm not really against that. So we'll put our commander back in the command zone. So let's play out the Mana Crypt. Our opponent's at four cards in hand. We'll see how much of this stuff he can counter. And once again, our opponent discards. That is a Cavern of Souls. So down goes the Mana Crypt. We do have the Buried Ruin, although there's not much point grabbing Mana Crypt with Buried Ruin while our lands are tapping for two mana. So I think trying to get down the Unwinding Clock is good here. Um, maybe Hedron Archive first. Yeah, maybe they'll want to counter a Hedron Archive. I really wanted to cast all this stuff into our commander to put plus counters on things, but having to bait out the counter magic is uh, yeah, kind of screwing us up here. Alright, so they allow down the Hedron Archive. Um, we'll just go for the Unwinding Clock and hope that it lands. Alright, awesome. So, we can go for the Liberator again here, I think, then. And untap everything during our opponent's turn. So, Liberator not getting as many counters as we would have liked, of course. But, like I said, we, um, we do get down the Unwinding Clock as safely as we could there. And now we've obviously got less that we can counter our opponent with. I think it's still worth getting down the Sensei's top. I can't think of anything for one mana that we'd be particularly bothered about countering. Especially after the Shadow Spear has hit play. But we can block their commander with ours quite nicely at this point. Could have held on to the Sensei's top and just done it during my opponent's turn. Just in case there is something that we're desperate to counter. I suppose that would have been the thing to do. Not worthy that they can bump their commander up to a 16-16. Um... But we'll likely be able to afford the Unstable Obelisk to take away the Trample next turn. So, yeah, we've got a loose plan. Let's go for spinning the top now that we've got it in play. <laughs> okay, um, well, there's a Grim Monolith. I mean, we could do with a Shuffle Effect, really, which we've got in hand. So, 
That is wastes, wastes, and we'll draw into the Grim Monolith next turn, ready to shuffle those basics away. So our artifacts untap during our opponent's untap step, thanks to the unwinding clock. As is Bauble from our opponent, and tapping down a bunch of mana looks like we're seeing another Eldrazi here. And yeah, the doubling cube does work, I just saw them put white mana into it. So they've got 14 mana floating. Okay, just going for the Eye of Ugin. They've got 7 mana floating still. And there we see Emrakul, the promised end. So we're going to take control of us during our next turn. So we might as well cast our things here then. Uh, let's go for the least amount of damage that they can deal to us. Um, we'll play out the Gilded Lotus. And we'll cast Warping Whale. Um, yeah, we'll just make an Eldrazi with that. The Wandering Archaic can copy that if we don't pay two into it. Um, yeah, we might as well pay two here, I think. Then we know what cards are on top, so uh, we'll go uh, tapping down the Sensei's Divining Top to draw into the Grim Monolith. Play the Grim Monolith for free. And then do we use the Unstable Obelisk to sacrifice and kill off the Emrakul? Or the Shadow Spear? Our opponent can have us tap out into swinging in, is the problem. And then get us on the swing back, get rid of the Ugin as well. Yeah, I think getting rid of the Emrakul because it has flying is the thing to do. So we'll allow Emrakul to come into play. So going for putting the Lightning Greaves onto the Emrakul, we will get rid of the Unstable Obelisk. They can uh, obviously use that against us during our turn, so yeah, definitely go for that here. And then they do have a Wasteland available to them, so they could get rid of our Buried Ruin if they haven't noticed that already. Otherwise, we can grab back the Unstable Obelisk and play it again. They go down to two cards in hand and play Urza's Factory. Then playing Expedition Map, one card in hand. Sure he wouldn't mind the Kozilek going down. Not swinging in, obviously going to go through to our turn. Draws into the Sensei's top, we just put on top of the library. Sacrificing our Scavenger Grounds to exile all graveyards. So down goes the Unstable Obelisk as well as a land for us. Does get rid of our opponent's graveyard, but he clearly doesn't care about that. So I'm assuming that he doesn't have any graveyard recursion in the deck. Sacrificing our Eldrazi as well. Just swinging in with the Kozilek. Thought my opponent might turn everything in sideways, but obviously feels as though he's going to take too much damage. So at double blocking. And so double blocking with his own Kozilek and the Wandering Archaic. Could have blocked with the Eldrazi Scion so that... He keeps his Wandering Archaic. We'll gain life to the Shadow Spear, of course, though. So our Kozilek goes down, as does the Wandering Archaic. Then casting our Sensei's Divining Top. Spinning the Sensei's Divining Top. So we'll assume that we've got two Wastes on top of our library now. Then drawing a card with the Sensei's Divining Top. I'm pretty sure you can, if you hold priority, you can spin the top and before it resolves... Tap down the Sensei's Divining Top, draw a card, put it on top of your library. And then the spin of the top will resolve and you can put it third from the top. So that your opponent doesn't uh, draw into it during the draw step. Anyway, didn't do that and we go for a waste off the Sensei's Divining Top. Which we were expecting. Then our opponent wrecks us by rolling a Planar die. Okay, and that's it. So... Uh, we're about to draw into the Sensei's Divining Top, which is fine. Um, so let's... Should we assume that there's a waste on top? I think that's alright. Let's play the Sensei's Top for free anyway. Don't think we're going to be swinging into the 13-13 lifelink. They gain more life than we hit them for. We're already up to 37 life again. So spin the top off the back of the Gilded Lotus. And okay, Mask of Memory's pretty good. Blast Zone isn't bad either. So at Waste, Blast Zone at Mask of Memory. Then we can sacrifice the Hedron Archive to draw into those. So then let's go for the Mask of Memory. Oh, actually, just totally over tap for that. So Mask of Memory goes onto our commander because it does have evasion here. We'll make use of this mana, sacrifice the Buried Ruin, and we'll grab back the Hedron Archive. So then let's play out the Hedron Archive again. And we go up to 74 life with that. With the floating mana we might as well spin with the top again. And okay, an Eldrazi Conscription now. So at Waste, Thunder's Enclave and Eldrazi Conscription. And do we just go for that here? Yeah, 
Let's tap down the top and draw into that. Play the Blast Zone. Now draws a Conscription onto the Liberator. The Conscription triggers the Forsaken Monument for two more life. Liberator getting its first plus counter. It's obviously buffed from the Forsaken Monument, so hasn't had many plus counters from all this being cast. But now gets plus 10, plus 10. So jumps up to a 14, 15 with Flash and Flying. Then we'll draw into the Sensei's Divining Top with the Mask of Memory. Um, yeah, just hold everything back, there's no reason not to. That does have Annihilator 2, so our opponent going to have to start sacrificing permanence here. And down to one card in hand, so pretty much reliant on the Eye of Ugin. Our opponent sacrificed a token and the Urza's Bauble. And we hit our opponent for 14 points of Commander, so we've got them next turn unless they can do something here. Mask of Memory, draw 2 and discard 1, so we'll get rid of a Waste. Then we play out the Sensei's Divining Top for free again. And let's tap down the Hedron Archive to spin the Sensei's Divining Top. And we'll see what we want to exile off the top with the Ugin, because we haven't plussed that yet. Okay, a Sword of Fire and Ice, and a Sword of Feast and Famine as well. Um, probably the uh, Feast and Famine is the best thing to draw into, so... Yeah, don't think I'd mind either of them, to be honest. So maybe we just exile a Waste. Let's go at Fire and Ice, Feast and Famine, and the Waste on top. Ready to plus with the Ugin. And then we've got Floating Mana, so might as well spin the top again and look at another Mystery card. And this time seeing a Basalt Monolith, which is infinite colourless mana for us. So, uh, yeah, I think it's Fire and Ice, Feast and Famine and the Basalt Monolith on top. And then we untap during our opponent's turn all of the artifacts, so... Yeah, we can do Sensei's Divining Top stuff, and Hedron Archive can be sacrificed to draw cards if needs be. Our opponent drew a card, and also has the Eye of Ugin available yet. Be good if we could untap the Blast Zone so that we can go for one on that. That would destroy the Shadow Spear, the Commander's Plate, and the Expedition Map might be slightly less relevant, but... Good to blow up the equipment. Anyway, Expedition Map sacrificing itself to tutor for a land. Going after a Mishra's Workshop, which can only be spent on artifacts. And playing that straight away. So with 8 mana still floating, 3 artifact mana floating, Eye of Ugin will tutor up another big spell. And yeah, it's about time we saw Ulamog, the Ceaseless Hunger. So we're able to cast Ulamog. You would think it would go after the Liberator and... Something else, maybe the Unwinding Clock, maybe the Forsaken Monument, okay. That's the last thing I thought they'd go for, Traxos. So both of those getting exiled. Not particularly worried about losing Traxos. Our commander obviously still has Flash, so we can still get it into play and swing in with it next turn, although I doubt we'll be able to make it powerful enough to be relevant. Um, we've got an extra four points of power from the swords that are on top. Anyway, Lightning Greaves going on to the Ulamog. Luckily we've gained a hell of a lot of life from the Forsaken Monument here, so we can take a few hits from this Ulamog. It will exile the top cards of our library. So we need to look at going for Hedron Archive, I think. We want the two swords in hand, so yeah, let's spin the top again. We'll go Basalt Monolith and put the two swords on top so that we can buff our commander quite nicely. Sacrifice the Hedron Archive to draw those. And then we are recasting our commander so that we can make use of we had a floating colourless mana. So we go up to 80, our commander comes into play. Um, might as well get down the swords here. They are one mana apiece. And having both swords is actually relevant here because we're going to have exactly seven damage with the Liberator. So yeah, pretty good few turns for us here. We've got a floating mana, might as well spin the top. I doubt that we're going to put the... Um, the Sensei's Divining Top on top of our library, although for a nettle sized it's probably worth it actually, so yeah, let's go Titan's Presence, Basalt Monolith, and I will allow my opponent to exile the Sensei's Divining Top here, I think. Just in case my opponent has something, we definitely want to be pushing Commander Damage through next turn. So I suppose just for the fun of it, we can play out the nettle sized now and show our opponent and the Seist is a living weapon, so that comes down as a 13-13, and that can quite nicely block the Ulamog. 
Although we could get some more card advantage here with Cloud Key and the Sword of the Animus, so might as well throw these two spirits in the way to get the card advantage. Ulamog has indestructible anyway, so no point trying to destroy it in combat. Alright, so ultimately all we have to do here, a uh, drawer is familiar as well to make the historic spells one less. Uh, ultimately all we have to do here is equip up our commander. And I don't think there's anything our opponent can do for free. Should really play out the Sword of the Animus and equip it for the ramp. But as we can see we've got exactly enough on our opponent. So we'll just turn him sideways here. Not going to go for the overkill with Nettle Seist. Because it might be that our opponent's got something that I'm not thinking about. And we'll want that as a blocker. But our opponent graciously takes the defeat. So we were going to draw into with Sword of the Animus. The Shrine of the Forsaken Gods. So yeah, not seeing anywhere near as many Eldrazi in this list as our opponent did. But obviously he had the Eye of Ugin available to him. That turned out to be a really fun interactive game, so hopefully you all enjoyed it. Be sure to give it a thumbs up and hopefully help push it through to other potential viewers of the channel. You can support on Patreon financially as well if you would like to. Link is in the description. Huge thank you to those of you who do that already. I'm Travel Kai. Thank you for watching.